Hey, this is Joe Burnett. I want to show you something pretty cool that I put together. Um, I'm going to give you a little demo of something I call CI Connect. Um, then I'm going to walk you through what happened in the background, what you actually saw. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about like how um, this system works, the uh, new auto scaling system. And then I'm going to show you how the Connect API would work with that. And then I want to tell you a little bit more about like what we could use this for. Um, so, but I want to start with actually like a real, like common use case, something that you actually run into regularly, um, myself included. Uh, so a demo, let's, let's say you have some job um, and this job causes you a lot of pain. It takes a long time to run. Um, it has uses a bunch of environment variables and imports other pieces of the pipeline and you can't really run it locally and you can't reproduce it. Um, so let's take a look at uh, such a job here. Um, here's my, here's a job that ran recently, failed. Um, I don't really know why. This is a little toy example, but you know, like it's, it's a stand in for something we kind of probably have all encountered. Uh, what I really want to do is I want to get my hands on this job and actually debug it, you know. Ideally, I'd like to be able to do it locally, but I can't do that right now. So I'd like to be able to get into the wherever this job was running and put my hands on it. So let's kick off another version of this job and see if we can do this. So GLAB, um, CI run. And I'm going to run this job. Okay, start a pipeline just has one job. So I'm going to take a look at the status here. Um, so here it is. Here's a new job. I'm going to copy that job ID here. Let's trail tail the, the logs. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get into this VM so that I can play around in the environment while uh, the job is running. This is not actually something new. This is something you can do with the um, runner console in the UI. But what I'm showing you is slightly different, and I'll tell you more about in the in the background section. All right, so we're we're starting this um, instance executor. Now, if you have been following along with the new auto scaling um, work we've been doing, the instance auto scaler and the Docker, the instance executor and the Docker auto scaler executor are part of our replacement for Docker machine. So we've been working on uh, pulling auto scaling out of Docker the Docker uh, machine runner and. Uh, making it available for all um, all executors. And um, there's some interesting things that we can do with this. So here's here's our job it's running. Um, let's get in there. So glab CI connect, and I'm going to give it our job ID. So notice I'm doing this from the command line, not from the UI. Um, that's kind of important. So here I am. I'm in my build. Let's take a look what's here. Let's look at this script. So this is where I do some, some debugging, you know, whatever it is that you need to do. I'm actually here in this environment. It's looking for a, a file called yes. So let's make a file called let yes. <laughs> See if that fixes it. Obviously, it's not going to be that easy, but you know, like the point is, is you wanna, you wanna hold on to this machine. I'm going to get your hands in there, maybe rerun the thing a couple times, step through it, whatever you need to do to, to debug it. So I made this file. Let's see if this fixes it. Oh, look, super duper says I'm OK. It's done. Job succeeded this time. And it's kind of waiting for me. This is good, too, because maybe maybe I didn't fix it. Maybe it you know, caused it to fail in some other way or the job just timed out. But I want to I want to hold on to it. So. I could continue, you know, reading logs, uh, looking at the artifacts here, trying to figure out what's going on as a networking issue, et cetera. When I when I'm done, I just you know disconnect as usual, and then um, job succeeded, and that VM will go away. So that's that's the idea. I, I put this thing together in like a day. So there's you know some janky pieces about it, but um, I want to show you a little bit about what is actually going on in the background. So here, the easiest thing to do is just to draw it. So um, here we have 
you. Use a smaller pen here. You want to run a job, and so you talk to GitLab. Now, this could be like you pushing some code, kicking off a job like I did, or a pipeline, whatever it is that you do to, to run a job. Then um, Runner is down here. Runner is actively pulling GitLab for work. Um, and when it gets a job, um, it's going to run it somewhere. With Docker Executor, it would make a VM through that. Sorry, with the Docker Machine, it would make a VM somewhere and run it remotely. With the new auto scaling system, it actually has this library called Task Scaler. And that's the auto scaler that we're going to use for everything. And it uses a plugin system. And so there's this fleeting plugin that knows how to talk to um of a that knows how to talk to a specific provider. In this case, I'm using GCP. So here's the this is one of the benefits of this architecture is um, there's a very generic interface here between task scaler and the fleeting plugins. So you can actually implement any plugin you want for any provider you want. So this together is kind of the runner system in two processes. So the what the what the fleeting plugin does is it actually creates uh, or uses an instance group. An instance group creates a bunch of VMs, and these are the ephemeral runner VMs that. Um, your job actually runs. So you are, your job actually runs here. And there's a couple networking barriers here. Obviously there's like a, a barrier between you and GitLab, right? You're sort of coming in from the outside from an API. There's also a barrier between you know, GitLab and the runner, at least in, in the way we set it up in gitlab.com, uh, because you know we don't really want untrusted code to have access to um, GitLab, uh, where the database is and everything else. And, and then this particular setup, there's also, you know, there's a, um, a network barrier between runner and the, um, instances that it actually uses. Uh, it, in GCP, we actually sort of all put it together, but, you know, the point is the untrusted code is sort of on the other side of the fence. So, um, when you actually request a job, when you actually run a job, it goes kind of through, yeah, let me pull up a highlighter. It kind of goes this way, through here, through runner, and into the instance. And um, the way that the con, the way that the runner connect works now, or sorry, the runner, um, the console that you can use through the UI is you actually like talk to GitLab and GitLab is the one that talks to runner and like you do everything through um, that one control plane. So it's like the control plane and the data plane together. So my proposal, what I showed you and what I'm proposing is something that separates the control plane cleanly from the data plane. So um, what when I ran G Lab Connect, it actually took a public SSH key and sent it to Task Scaler, to runner into Task Scaler, and through the fleeting plugin, which knows how to talk to instances, and actually put a public SSH key of my choice into the machine running my job. And what came back was a public IP address. So it's actually a very simple API and even stateless, right? It's just like, hey, I, I want to connect. So you, 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 know, you connect, you say, hold the machine for up to 30 minutes. Here's a public key. And what you get back is a, a public IP address. Then um, GLab, the second thing GLab did there was it actually connected directly to the VM. 
So now at this point, I SSH into the VM. It already has my key. I use my private key to SSH directly into the VM. And I totally own this thing. And of course, you know, runner over here has been told to hold on to it, you know, so it's not going to delete it out from underneath me. Um, and I could do whatever I want in here. And that, that's okay. That's okay for you to own this VM because you're already running. We're running your untrusted code in there. So you can do whatever you want with this VM. And you'll be charged CI minutes as long as this VM is running. So, um, you know, that's why we have timer on it. So you don't actually use them all up. Um, and then you do your debugging. And when you're finished, you know, you disconnect. Um, and then you send a release signal to the connect API. And the release signal goes through all the way to runner and releases the hole on that VM. And then that VM will be garbage collected once the job is done. Um, yeah, so that's 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 the idea. Um, this, is, this is helpful. It's, it gives you um, it gives you the ability to actually get your hands on the job environment where it's running, which is difficult to do in in uh, on GitLab.com. It it it's similar to the uh, to the runner console because you know it lets you get in there, but it's through a API, and um, that means that you can build more automation on top of it. Like if you just want to, if you want to go collect some things from the environment, you can have your, you know, some local automation, push a public key in there, go do whatever you need to do in that environment, and then come back out again. It's actually the same mechanism that um, GitLab Runner uses to drive the job itself. We actually SSH in there and run the stuff. Um, it would be even better if you could run the job on your machine. So you could actually like use your environment that you're used to and comfortable with um, to run the job. That's a that's more difficult than it sounds. More difficult than it should be, because um, Runner has evolved oh, from a sidekick job into this thing, then and it's evolved with a lot of infrastructure. But it's very coupled all the way through GitLab into the runner, into the ephemeral VM. Um, for example, you know, you know, a lot of the pipeline expansion is done in GitLab and only comes to runner as sort of like a concrete, you know, um, job description with a bunch of environment variables and a complete, you know, thing. And runner, so runner doesn't really get a chance to, um, doesn't really get a chance to like get a hold of that. And it also is like a bunch of shell scripts that get wrapped in shell scripts for control purposes. So it's really hard to unpack that and just say, here, run this locally. Um, there's not an API to do it because half of the stuff happens in GitLab, half of the stuff happens in Runner. Um, so ultimately we'd like to get to a point where we could do that. And there is something um, we internally have been calling task runner. Uh, and the idea is what should be delivered to runner should be a materialized payload of exactly what to do, all the things you need to do, and it just executes them one by one, even including get, you know, check out all the stuff, all the cat, you know, so you can override it, you can compose it, and it's very prescriptive. That should get injected into the actual environment, and the environment itself should be running that. That way, GitLab runner doesn't have to act as an intermediary for all the logs. They can even go directly back to GitLab. And um, you can also take that list of tasks and you can capture it and you can run it locally and you can rerun it, et cetera, and mess around with it. Because, you know, like it, it, it's a lot easier to, if you can express, if you have a concrete materialized data transfer object that describes exactly what you're supposed to do at some point in the system. There isn't one right now. And we're working, we're gonna to work towards that eventually. Um, but in the meantime, you know, being able to SSH into it is a really um, good first step. And something that's not available right now on gitlab.com for various reasons. Um, so this might actually make it a lot easier. I would propose that 
and create this connect API. Um, oh, by the way, one of the things that I did, I, I cheated a little bit because I put this thing together in, a, in, in just a day. And, and I actually kind of just sent the public IPA directly to run it right here um, because uh, I was using production GitLab and I had runner running locally, but really we can figure out, we can figure out how to plumb that through. It's stateless. It, it just, you know, we could just maybe hit workhorse and have workhorse forwarded on. We want runner to be able to communicate with GitLab. Um, and for the, you know, as we evolve runner to be more of a, you know, decomposed and well architected like separate piece and to pull those apart like I was describing it runner would should really have a streaming grpc connection with uh with gitlab rather than just a long pull for just jobs so one of the things that we could do is is if we were to implement this you know this public key path um the way that runner could get is we could set up this grpc we like with connecting to workhorse or connecting to whoever um, so that we can just have like a, a nice clean path. And then we can we can continue to use that to develop develop things like task runner or um, to build on top of it. So um, yeah, that's the idea. That's the experience that I want. I want you to be able to just like see a job, connect to a job, get your hands in there um, easily. Um, and I want you to be able to do it uh, without relying on the UI as well. Um, and also it's kind of helpful um, if the UI is, you know, running on the client side, because you can do this whole thing on the client side as well. You can generate a key in memory. You don't have to, you know, it's a one-time use key. You can just generate a key in memory, send the public key through, use the private key and get your connection from the from a terminal in the client, you know, like in the UI, even embedded in the UI, and you can you can do your debugging right there. So um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a little bit nicer of an abstraction to build on top of, uh, and hopefully it will alleviate some of the pain of not being able to get your hands on jobs that are failing. Um, so that's the idea, the Runner Connect API. Um, if you want to learn more about some of the things I've been talking about, take a look at the Next Runner Auto Scaling Blueprint, which describes this uh, underlying ar architecture I was describing with task scaler, fleeting, and instance groups. Um, there's already um, instance and Docker autoscaler executor docs. So if you go look at the list of um, runner executors, there's two new ones and they describe the configuration there, like pointing to the right instance group, choosing the right plugin, et cetera. Um, if you look at the runner development docs, it also tells you how to set this up locally to run it, develop on it and build it, You know, which is really nice for understanding it as well as um, adding features. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna include this video as a post on a local execution blueprint. We're trying to figure out how to get to that sort of ideal local execution um, that many people want. Um, so I'm gonna put this there as, as maybe an intermediate step. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed seeing the little demo in the background. Um, and I hope that this is something that will be useful. Thanks for watching.